How long do the benefits of the nasal breathing exercises last? Like, is this something that you do and you're going to stick with that and, and you're going to see that benefit for quite a while if you've been doing that for several months? Or is it something that you have to continuously keep doing to make sure that those, those benefits maintain? It will depend on your bowl score. If your bowl score remains at a pretty decent level, you're holding on to the benefits. And we don't just use bowl score, we also use the maximum breathlessness test. So the bowl score gives you feedback of the onset and endurance of breathlessness. And it's a very simple test. You take a normal breath in through your nose, normal breath out, hold your nose, and you time it in seconds until you feel the first involuntary contraction of your breathing muscles. And then you let go and you breathe. Um, so we want, we want athletes to be at least above 25 seconds of a bowl score. If they're less than 25 seconds, they have dysfunctional breathing. Dysfunctional breathing equals dysfunctional movement. Dysfunctional movement equals increased risk of injury. But we also want them to have a decent maximum breathlessness time. And that's take a normal breath in, normal breath out, pinch nose, hold, start walking, and count how many paces. What's the maximum number of paces that you can walk while holding your breath? Now it's a push. That's measuring the upper limit of tolerance of breathlessness. So to, to answer your question, it's nasal breathing during every day and during physical exercise, but breath holding as well and breath holding on the, on the exhalation. So nose breathing, slow breathing is, is improving functional breathing, increasing oxygen uptake, increasing oxygen delivery, protecting the airways, you know, influencing the autonomic nervous system, et cetera, cadence breathing, for example, increasing HRV, respiratory sinus arrhythmia, stimulating the vagus nerve, all that good stuff. But then we do breath holding to push the boundaries. So we have functional breathing on one hand, that's one pillar, and breath holding on the exhalation is the other pillar. And I want people to bring it into their way of life. You know, I'm not an athlete, but I'll have my mouth closed every night. I walk down the street with my mouth closed. If I'm on a treadmill, I have my mouth closed. I do breath holding. Um, you know, if I'm doing presentations to large groups of people, I want to be fully in the present moment. I don't want to have my mind agitated by distracted thoughts. I want to enter the zone. And you can do that and you can replicate that by the breath. This isn't just about you know, physical performance. This is also about mental performance and sleep. Mm 